So let's look a little bit more. Some of these uh, texts with apologies for uh, delaying your lunch. Um, but I did say that I wanted this primarily to be looking at the literature and just skating over the outlines of, of the story. Uh, <coughs> one thing that often arises is uh, there's disputes over the worms looking up at the four caliphs and trying to see who is highest and why and in what way. But the another issue that arises is Abu Bakr and Ali. We know that Imam Ali is basically the fountainhead of the Sunni Sufi tariqas. Uh, but the Naqshbandis uh, believe that Abu Bakr is the first figure in the silsila, and the Naqshbandiya are the largest, probably, tariqa and have a considerable extent in uh, this country. So sometimes popularly this is taken to be a kind of tension, but it's not. And I want to explain how this works, uh, drawing attention once again to the mainstream Islamic desire to reconcile itilaf, to bring people together, by looking at one of the great works of the 19th century Naqshbandiya, the Sheikh with two intermediaries of Sheikh Isad Erbili, who we looked at earlier in his poem on Hazrati Fatima, radiallahu anha, and this is Maulana Khalid, dies in 1826, buried in the Kurdish district of Damascus. Um, and the, the scholar who really revives the Naqshbandiya throughout the Middle East uh, and Turkey. <coughs> Not so much the Balkans, the Naqshbandi lines in the Balkans tend to function in a different way and sometimes it's an older version of the Naqshbandiya as I understand it. Um, but yeah, Maulana Khalid and he has this Diwan, one of the great monuments of Naqshbandi literature, it's um, mostly in Persian. And he begins with his Munajat. I'd like to just read a little bit from this, where he is explaining how the Siddiqi affiliation of the Naqshbandiya works with the Alid affiliation of the tradition of the Ahlil Bayt. And it's important, I think, to, to understand this, not only to look at the mechanics of how the silsila works, but also to see the, <coughs> the mindset which wants to bring about a kind of concordist solution. So this is how his great poem starts. It, it's long, we won't be able to look at much of it, but we'll take it at least as far as the imam where the silsilas seem to come together, which a lot of people really misunderstand. Now this is a monajet. خدا زنده به حق اسم عظم به نور سید اولاد آدم. I'll do a rough translation. <coughs> oh my God, by the sanctity of the greatest names, by the light of the master of the children of Adam. So he's beginning with a kind of monajet uh, or invocation, reminding us and reminding the divine object of the poem is an address to God of, the, of what is truly great in his creation. So verse 2, is by the virtue of the, the, the flame of light which is in the the soul of the Siddiq, by the virtue of Salmani, Farisi and Qasim. Okay, <coughs> this is really important for all the Naqshbandi silsilas. Uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq, this great companion of the Chosen One, uh, according to the Naqshbandi stories, that the key spirituality of Abu Bakr Siddiq was to do the dhikr silently, which is what most Naqshbandis do, whereas the tariqas that take their lineage to Imam Ali very often will use um, jahri, spoken or sung forms of dhikr. But 
figure number two uh, in the chain, Salman al Farisi. Figure number three. Figure number three is Al Qasim. This is Qasim bin Muhammad bin Abu Bakr. He dies round about the year 107 of the Hijra. Is actually an important figure, one of the great muftis and hadith scholars of his time. There's a lot of his hadiths in Sahih Muslim, for instance, um, regarded as one of the seven fuqaha of Medina, um, studied under Abu Huraira, Abdullah bin Amr bin al As, some of the great ones, some of the great isnads come through him. Um, and uh, Al Qasim. Uh, has three daughters who are famed for their piety and their scholarship. One of them is called Um Farwa, and she uh, marries Imam Muhammad al Baqir and therefore becomes the mother of Imam Ja'far al Sadiq. So, if you can get your mind around the kind of family tree situation here, Ja'far al Sadiq's mother is the great granddaughter of. Um, Abu Bakr is Siddiq. Hmm. Incidentally, her mother was a certain Asma bin Abdurrahman uh, bin Abu Bakr, uh, who is also from the lineage of, of Abu Bakr. Uh, so she's a kind of double great granddaughter of Abu Bakr. And this is, from the Naqshbandi point of view, why uh, there isn't really a tension, because Ja'far al Sadiq has this very powerful stream of Irfan and knowledge and wisdom and Siddiqiyah coming from Abu Bakr, as well as through the formal lineage, through Muhammad al-Baqir, Ali Zain al-Abidin, Imam Hussain and uh, Imam Ali. So that's really important, the Naqshi golden chain, which goes on to the present day, through Baha'uddin Naqshba and Abdul Khalid Urj Devani and so forth, uh, goes back to Ja'far al-Sadiq, who we tend to think of, if you don't really look into the sources as uh, the sixth Imam of the Shia, well, mm, too big and capacious a soul to be just limited to that perspective. Uh, but also, fourth figure in the golden chain of the Naqshbandiyya, who we always associate as being the Sunni tariqa par excellence. But when you look into these texts, you'll see that for somebody like Maulana Khalid, it's not like that. It's not Sunnah against Shia, except for some exoterists who are uh, uh, dividers. Uh, instead, the uh, spiritual lineages of Islam interact and flow and certainly doesn't seem to have been a problem for Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq that he had the lineage of uh, Abu Bakr uh, Siddiq. So let's read a little bit more of this um, because he does, it's something that Nakhban in particular want to emphasize the affiliation to Imam Ja'far. بشاه صفتر کرر حیدار که از نیرویش به شد باب خیبر. By uh, the the noble king who overcame the ranks of the powerful enemy Haidar, the 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 lion, uh, who with his own bare strength carried on his back the gate of the citadel of Khaybar. نبود فصلی بی روزیگاری زارش که از رایل و در بیزول فکارش حضرت علی کرم الله و شعو was the one who was so successful in the fortunes of war in using his sword ذول فکار that it was as if he was the angel of death از رایل به آن سر و گولستانی نبوت به آن شم و شبستانی فتوت he was the tall cypress tree in the Prophet's garden, the lamp in the palace of Futuwa, the manly virtue. So we'll have to fast forward. Yeah. Yeah, verse 12, Muhammad al-Baqir an kuhi mufakhir ke az nahrir yish, is that? Nahrir yish guften baqir. The one who was the summit of nobility and glory and the, the plunged the very depths of knowledge 
al-baqir, by his uh, merit. And then, bihaqi majma' al-baharini anwar kishuddu razi siddiqu ali bar. So by the right of he who was the Majma al-Bahrain, the one who is the point at which the two oceans come together, uh, which was the way of the Siddiq and the way of Ali. So this is his understanding of what Imam uh, Ja'far was. Imam Sadiq wa Mastuqi Ja'far ka'in do mansab ura shud muyassar. Imam Sadiq the one who is also Mastuq, the one who is believed, Ja'far, who in this has the two roles and this was made easy for him. So Ja'far as Sadiq, the commentary here has of course the details of the family tree, Ja'far as Sadiq on the father's line, Muhammad al-Baqir, Ali Zain al-Abidin, Hazri Hussein, Hazrati Ali. It's an esoteric thing that for some later generations became the basis of an exoteric madhab. And through the mother's line, Um Farwa, the scholar luminary of Medina, Qasim, Muhammad, Hazrat Abu Bakr. So there's that filiation as well, the mother and the, the father. Yeah. Anyway, there's a, then the Imam goes on. It's a very uh, long, beautiful poem, but he really wants to emphasize this. His, a figure of considerable political importance in the Ottoman Empire spends a lot of time in Iraq, which is why they call him Khalid al-Baghdadi, where, of course, even in those days, there's Shi'i districts, Sunni districts, and as a uh, Naqshi Sufi, he really wants to create this way of overcoming that binary and demonstrating uh, that Ali is the city of knowledge for the Naqshbandis as well as he is for anybody else. So 